Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie. I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And in today's regular podcast episode, I have a lot to catch you up on. It's been about a month. I think since my last like regular podcast episode, there have been a few vlogs uh, since then and a pattern roundup. So if you haven't seen any of those videos, I really recommend you check them out because the vlogs especially were super fun to make. And while I am going to show you the finished object today uh, from those vlogs, you get the whole backstory when you watch all of those. So. Something else to catch you up on, um, obviously I am in a different filming location. So we moved my desk where I work from home as well as edit these videos upstairs. I was working downstairs um, just so that I can have a little bit of privacy during the workday and I'm not just like out in our open space living room downstairs where everyone else tries to be at the same time. Um, and I also moved my yarn storage over here. It fit perfectly, and I mean just perfectly, um, in between the space, between the wall, and the desk. So, it is all over here now. It feels a little weird, to be honest. Um, like, the yarn storage, it because we turned it vertically, it feels like it's less storage. Like I don't have the space on top of the shelf anymore. So I feel like I'm downsizing, even though like the space inside the cubbies is all the same as what I had before. But I did have a second cubby, if you remember the black one, that I am trying to completely empty so that we can move that into another room. So there is a little bit of downsizing going on. I do have a giant bag full of yarn to de-stash or donate. So at some point in hopefully the very near future, I'm honestly hoping to do some of that today. Um, there will be a de-stash on my Instagram. I'm thinking of posting some of the stuff on Ravelry and it'll all be posted in the D-Stash Discord group that I belong to as well. So that's all the crazy different stuff out of the way. Um, you can probably tell that I'm wearing a finished object, something that the podcast has not seen for a few months. So I'm going to talk to you about this. I have another finished object as well. I have a couple new works in progress that you haven't seen yet. And as always, I've got a boatload of yarn that I've acquired in the last month. And since this is the first podcast that I'm doing in a long time, I do have something exciting planned for the very end. So make sure you stay tuned to see what that is. So let's get into it. Let's start with what I'm wearing. This is my Helianthus tank by Andrea Gone. She's at Andrea Gone Knits on Instagram. I'll put the handle here so you can see. Um, and I knit this out of Quince and Co sparrow which is a 100% linen yarn in the colorways paprika lunar and viburnum is the purple and if you've been watching the podcast you'll remember this from back in like April May is when I was really working on this uh, full time. I was actually part of the test knit group for this tank top and this was the first version that I cast on and I cast it on and I realized after knitting the body, it's a bottom up tank top design knit, um, I realized that the, my gauge was off, <laughs> which is my problem with honestly everything. Um, the original sample is knit in a cotton linen blend yarn and because this is a 100% linen yarn, it doesn't have that cotton in there, I think the properties of the yarn were just different and so even though I did do a gauge swatch, um, it just didn't work out the way that I thought it would and the way that I wanted it to. So I abandoned this like 
halfway through the test knit and I cast on a second one using Pearl Soho Linen Quill and that one honestly also turned out to be slightly over gauge. <laughs> Um, but I finished that for the test knit and it was fine, all good. So after I finished the version in Linen Quill, I came back and honestly mostly finished this. I knit the whole top section. Um, I realized with the Linen Quill version that once you finish the body, the rest of this goes very quickly because you're knitting the front panel and you can see everything's like decreasing here. You knit the back panel, same thing, everything is decreasing. So your number of stitches decreases and it feels like it's going way faster. So I came back to this version and I knit it all. And the problem ended up being for me that because I was knitting this in stripes, I had so many ends to weave in and it really overwhelmed me and I'm not a person to normally complain about weaving in ends. I will happily take a break from the knitting, weave in some of my ends, get all of the ends out of my face. They kind of bother me when they're all dangling all over the place anyways, but this was so many and like I said, I got overwhelmed and I put this project on the back burner at the bottom of my whip pile for months <laughs> literally months and then i was going on a trip i went on a camping trip last week and the week or two weeks before i realized hey it might be nice to have this tank top to wear on the trip all i really need to do is get all these ends woven in and I need to do the ribbing details on the neck and on the armbands. And it took me a couple more days to weave in all the ends, but I had had a significant break from the last time I was trying to do it. And so I got it all done. And then doing these edging pieces really took no time at all. I think that took me a couple hours to do. And then it was done and I was like, I put this off for so long when I really only needed like two or three more days to finish it like <laughs> crazy I could have been wearing this for so much longer but now it's done I will say I did not wear it once on my trip at all but I am glad that it's done I really spent most of my trip just like in a bathing suit because we were at a lake all day every day so that's why I, I really didn't want to like mess up my knits with like dirt and sand and like lake water even though it probably would have been fine but that's a whole nother story but yeah overall I'm I'm happy with it I'm glad it's done again it is a little bit wider than it's supposed to be it's supposed to be closer to zero amount of ease and I don't think it's a huge issue but like you can see any bra that I wear underneath it but like it is like nice and like flowy and light um, I guess as flowy as linen can really be, but overall I'm really happy with it. I'm glad it's off my needles and I'm glad it's done and I'm glad I can wear it now. I think this pattern is super flattering on a lot of people because it has a little bit of a higher neckline. Um, I know a lot of tank tops, especially knit tank tops, really just give you that like triangle right here and so there's a lot of skin exposed. So if that's not the look you're going for, I really would recommend this tank because like I said again, it does come up a little bit higher in the neckline and it gives you more of that full coverage. Um, the straps also hit at a really nice spot where it does cover almost all of my bras so I really like that as well but yeah this is the helianthus tank um, it came out earlier this year so a relatively newer release and I would highly recommend it I'm really happy with it and this was my first time doing stripes and um, as much as I hated weaving in the ends I think next time I do stripes uh, depending on what the situation is I might try to carry the yarn instead of cutting the yarn every stripe um, I love it. I've been really wanting to knit something with stripes, I feel like for almost a year now, maybe over a year. And so to finally have something, um, it's really nice. I can tell right now, it looks a little bit wonky right here, but that's just what happens when you pick up the stitches, I think. 
it just gets pulled up a little bit but it's fine it's whatever um yeah so i'm really happy with it that's the helianthus tank all right let me show you my second finished object if you did watch all of my vlogs thank you i appreciate you i am going to talk about what i knit through all of those vlogs so dun -dun -dun -dun. i'm so happy with this so this is my ingrid top by gregoria fibers it is heavily modified and i'll talk you through a little bit of those modifications um and the yarn that i used for this is terrapin fiberworks let me show you Um, the base is Deer Creek Fingering, which is a 60% organic cotton, 40% linen, and the colorway is Hearts Core. Oops, just dropped that. Um, Terrapin Fiberworks dyes plant-based yarns, so a lot of cotton, linen, blends, tensile, which I've never tried before, um, and so I really wanted to start trying out all of those different yarn bases, especially for summer knits, and I'm so happy with how this turned out. I really like the fabric. Let me break you, show you a little close up here. I really like the fabric. The yarn did seem to bloom a little bit after I blocked it. Like when I was knitting with it, um, it seemed really thin. And after blocking, you can definitely tell that like the stitches filled out the space a little bit more, which was is, is really nice. I'm really glad I did that. Or <laughs> I'm really glad that happened. Um, but yeah, so the brief, <laughs> not three vlogs uh, long version of the story is I wanted to knit a top specifically to wear on the camping trip and um, I really liked the Ingrid top pattern I really liked this yarn I thought they would be a match made in heaven turns out the Ingrid top is meant for more of a DK worsted yarn um, Gregoria fibers has their own yarn that they recommend for the pattern it's really hard to get Gregoria fiber yarn here in the US so um, the other one of the other yarns that they recommend is Sanis Garn Line, which I have worked with before. I worked with that last year when I knit the Thea top. Loved that yarn, but it is definitely like a more DK worsted weight yarn. I was using a fingering weight yarn, so I figured that out pretty early. Realized that my gauge was going to be all wrong, and instead of one scrapping the project and two just going and buying the Line. I basically regraded the entire pattern uh, to fit me and to fit my gauge. It was a lot of work, it was a lot of knitting and frogging and re-knitting, but eventually it worked out and it fits perfectly. Um, the only thing is I think I did the neckline a bit too tight. I probably could have picked up a few more stitches in the neckline or just bound off a little bit looser. I really, I had to redo the neckline multiple times because it was such a problem. <laughs> but the neckline and the arm bands really like brought the whole piece together. Like it was looking like it was gonna be way bigger. And then you add those pieces and it just like shrinks it all in, which um, is really nice. Cause I love the shaping of this. It's kind of got that shaping that's really popular right now where it's close to your neck and it kind of goes in and then it goes out um which i think is super cute and yeah it just fits i'm i've i mentioned it a lot in the vlogs but i'm really just proud of myself for doing all the math and figuring it out and then it actually working so this is like a really really special piece to me because of that so one other thing about my Ingrid top, I don't know if you can tell already, is I have, uh, I'm getting back into becoming a nail polish girly, um, and this color that I have basically perfectly matches my Ingrid top, and I love it. My goal is to just match my nail polish to as many of my knits or yarns 
as humanly possible. And in talking about my nail polish, I do want to mention that I am now an affiliate member for Olive and June. So if you are interested in, number one, trying out Olive and June nail polish, um, or if you're interested in purchasing new colors of Olive and June, I know they're a pretty popular nail polish brand. Um, I will put my affiliate link down in the description box below. Any purchase through that link gives me a small commission at no extra cost to you. And I also have a 20% off code uh, that can be used on purchasing a system. So if it is your first time purchasing Olive in June and you would like to try one of their encompassing systems, which includes, I believe it's five nail polishes, the little grippy thing that goes on the cap that helps you like put the nail polish on better. It also includes a pair of nail clippers, a buffer, a nail file, and the makeup, makeup, and the nail polish remover. Um, if you're interested in purchasing that whole system, my 20% off code is LeslieH20. So you can check that out all in the description box down below. So I will probably be showing you my nail polish color in all future episodes as well, and reminding you of my affiliate link. So. This is today's matchy matchy moment and I absolutely love it. It makes me happy. Oh, this color, by the way, is called Southwest. If you're interested in this color of nail polish, it's a little bit like rusty, orangey red. And this is actually um, their quick dry nail polish. This color specifically was gifted to me for becoming an affiliate with them. Um, however, I have like 10 nail polish colors from them that I've purchased by myself. Um, but the quick dry, this was my first time trying the quick dry and it dries really quickly, which I really enjoyed because I could get back to my knitting way sooner than before. Again, if you want to watch all of the trials and tribulations and success of knitting this um, and then see a few clips of me actually wearing it on the camping trip, um, you can go check out the vlogs. All three of them are now live and it was really fun to make the vlogs and knit this top. So that is that. All right, I have a couple whips that I don't think you have ever seen on YouTube. So I'm gonna start with the most exciting one. Yeah, <laughs> sneak peek. Okay, I am, and I've put a lot of work into this and a lot more work needs to go into this, but I am knitting, let's see if I can even show this to you. I know it looks like it's almost done, but it's not almost done. <laughs> well, maybe almost. I don't know. It's not almost done. Okay, anyways, this is the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. She's at Perfectly Knotted on Instagram. And the yarn, the yarn is looking crazy on camera. The yarn that I'm using for this, let me show you, is Explore Knits and Fibers in the colorway Fresh Balsam. And this is on her Carlsbad Worsted Base. So it's this lovely green, blue, variegated yarn. There are speckles of like this red that really matches my nail polish. And it's gorgeous. I picked this up in a de-stash from someone and it had been sitting on my yarn shelf uh, waiting to be put away and I honestly just like could not resist any longer. I was like I need to cast this on right now um, And I just thought this would be a really fun Blue green guard cardigan to have in my wardrobe to wear with you know, like a white tank underneath or black or something like that. So I actually uh, Actually hold on the construction of this is super interesting because you know, obviously you start at the back, you start with the neckband, which I've done before in a lot of like Ozetta patterns, and then you pick up the back, and then, I don't know if you can see this, but it's not a raglan. Um, it's got similar shaping to a raglan in that you have these seams, but there's only two seams, and these are actually the shoulder seams, so they sit right on your shoulders. So there's one here, and there's one here, and then everything in between is the back, and then you knit 
you know, on the other side, these are the front panels. Um, the, the button band, as well as the seam here, is actually brioche, which this is the first time I had ever done brioche. I bought the pattern not even realizing like that's what it was and I started looking at it and reading it and like trying to cast on and I was like what is this? And then I was like oh well I guess I'm learning how to do brioche today <laughs> and honestly it was like super easy like Everything in knitting seems so complicated, like some of these crazy things like brioche and, you know, half fisherman's rib, and it, it's really just like yarn overs and knit two, knit, knit two together, and like, it's super, super easy, so, um, yeah, it was just funny, but, yeah, the construction is super weird, um, well, let me, I can just chuck it on, show you. Oh, I don't know if you can tell. The sleeves are like way too tight. I'll talk about that in a minute. And it really does not work very well with uh, the, my stripes underneath. The colors are all wrong. But um, I actually blocked this yesterday because I needed to see how everything was fitting in order to determine how I wanted to continue with the sleeves and what length I needed uh how much longer I needed to knit the body and I'm really really happy that I blocked this because I have learned some things of how I need to continue um but yeah you can see here okay so here's the shoulder seam it looks super cool um you can see it on the other side as well and basically The cardigan in general is like oversized, the body, which is really nice. And then my sleeve is like a little toothpick sleeve. It's so tight. So I am going to rip back both the sleeves. I really think I should have knit the front panel honestly just like half an inch longer. Um, and then I probably wouldn't be in this situation, but when I joined in the round for all the, all the front panels and the back panel, I was on vacation and I tried it on and I was like, this is maybe a little too tight, but I'm just going to go with it. It'll be fine. It'll block out. I really didn't want to deal with it while I was on vacation and you know, I'm paying for that now, but it's okay. I think I can pick up a few more stitches, um, in the arm and then the decrease rate on the sleeves is like super rapid it's a very rapid decrease and so I'm just going to decrease less rapidly <laughs> for hopefully a bit of a wider sleeve and then um, I knit the sleeve exactly to pattern the number of rows that it said and for the cuff and I need it to be a couple inches longer so I'm gonna be adding a couple inches to the sleeve as well so, same on this one. I probably could have just knit one sleeve and figured that out, but I knit both of them. Um, and then I need to doop, add some length. I really need to figure out how much longer I need to knit. I don't think it's that much longer. Um, in the pattern, I'm supposed to add ribbing like now but I do think I'll add another one or two inches before I add the ribbing um let me see it is at a it's at a decent length here in the back but I think I just need it to be a couple more inches longer so that's the plan with this I am loving knitting on this um it's been a super fun knit and even though I have to frog some things I really don't want that to take away from my joy of knitting this which sometimes I do that to myself when I have to knit something or when I have to frog something a lot of times it makes me like dislike the knit a little bit because like I didn't do it right or you did me wrong but I'm really trying to not let that happen with this knit I've um I've been reading like a lot of really good books while knitting this um, most recently and like most 
my most intense love right now is I read Fourth Wing. I finished it in a few days and um, that's actually what I knit. That's actually what I was reading while I knit the sleeves. Um, this, but anyways, every time I pick this up, I like think about Fourth Wing. <laughs> And I love it. I'm, I'm obsessed with the book. I want to read it again. I'm like looking for all the fourth wing content on like TikTok and YouTube. That's like good fourth wing content. Not all of the YouTubers that are like, this was the worst book of 2023 because I don't want to hear your negative opinions. I loved it. Um, but yeah, I'm just really loving how it's looking. I think it's gonna be really cute and I wasn't planning on knitting this this year at all. I bought the yarn on a whim, I cast this on on a whim, but I think this will be really fun to take to Ireland too because it's all like, you know, green and blue. So, yay. Okay, that's the current status of my Cal cardigan. So I am really hoping to get this finished um, in the next week. I think I can. I knit these sleeves, took me like three days to knit both of these sleeves, um, which it might take me a little bit longer because I'm not going to be decreasing as much. <laughs> they just look so small. I knew when I was knitting them, I was like, this is, are you sure about this? Um, but yeah, that's okay. It's so pretty. And this yarn is so soft. I love exploring knits and fibers. After knitting so working on this in linen and knitting my Ingrid top in like the cotton and linen blend, I was just like itching also just to have Superwash Merino back on my needles. And before that I knit the um, Cathedral pullover which was in a non-Superwash worsted base. So just having this Superwash Merino on my needles, it's so soft and it's so squishy. And I was like, I needed this. I needed all of this softness, so. I love it. I'm loving it. I just wanted to share with you because I don't think I've shared this yet on the podcast. I shared it on Instagram. I am keeping this project in this new project bag that was gifted to me by Michelle of Kettle and Hearth uh, Fibers. Yep. Let's see if you can see the logo. But this bag is humongous. I had all like seven skeins of yarn in here. I still have two in here that I haven't wound up yet and one cake. It has a little ring for, you can put stitch markers on here and it's got pockets in here as well. Where are they? Here's a pocket. What do I have in here? Oh, my swatch. I have some uh, oh, yarn ends in here. But yeah, everything, everything fits. You just like shove it all in. This bag is meant for like a sweater quantity's worth of yarn. And I love the like ring on the zipper so it makes it really easy to zip it up. This is the Willow Project bag. She hand sews all of her bags. She tries to source all of her materials from like um, independent uh, like fabric designers uh, here in the US. And um, if you're interested, I would really suggest checking her out on Instagram. She's working on like a fall collection right now and you can sign up for her newsletter because sometimes her bags, she has like other styles as well. She has one that's like a big like canvas style as well um that she says sell out relatively quickly so if you're on the newsletter you get first dibs and first access to know when new bags go live so um yeah the fall collection has new like fall patterns um and i haven't looked in the last couple or in the last week um but last time i looked that orange blossom blue fabric was on the website so You'll have to check her out. Okay, I have one more work in progress that I wanna show you. It's actually another knit for Ireland. I'm gonna be making a whole video on my knits that I'm making for Ireland. So you will see this one twice if you're gonna watch that video. But um, I've got my 
I've got to cast on my sweaters soon, so that'll be coming maybe next week. Um, oh shoot, everything's tangled. All right, we are untangled. And let me show you. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know if I can show all of it. <laughs> um, I'm knitting a Sophie shawl. It's, you know, not very exciting. I think everyone, a lot of people, not everyone, a lot of people have knit the Sophie scarf. This is actually my first Sophie pattern that I am knitting. Um, and I'm trying to knit this as large as humanly possible so that it'll be really nice to like have just like all wrapped around me on the airplane when I'm flying for a million hours. So I'm not quite halfway done yet. Um, I've actually still got a bunch of knitting to go, but dropped the yarn. The yarn that I am using for this is Hedgehog Fibers. Um, I don't even know what base this is. Hold on. It just says 9010 merino wool and nylon. Um, and the colorway is called Taffy. It's super cute light pink with all of these, you know, speckles of different colors coming through, which you can definitely see in the finished object, well, in the knit. Um, I absolutely love it. It's so fun. It's so fun to knit. It's to like see all of the different colors pop up. Um, and also the pattern is just like really easy knit. I think a lot of people have talked about this pattern uh, in YouTube podcasts. So like there isn't that much to say. <laughs> it's just a garter stitch shawl with um, an I-cord edging. So and you increase every couple of rounds and uh, you just have at it. So the other special piece about this is that Hedgehog Fibers is located in Ireland. So I saw this yarn in my stash and I was like, oh, that would make a really cute shawl. And then I picked it up and I looked at the label and it said made in Ireland. And I was like, this is just too good to be true. So. I'm going to knit this to wear on the airplane and to wear around Ireland and I'm going to bring this when we go to Hedgehog Fibers and I'm going to show them and they're going to hopefully be like, oh, that's our yarn and the colorway taffy and I'm going to be like, I know, isn't it so cute? And then we're just going to have a big ol' happiness about that. So that's my second active whip right now. Um, you may also just be remembering my other whips that I haven't touched in a while. Number one, the Seasons Cardigan. It's still there. I needed a break from the <laughs> Knitting for Olive uh, merino, worsted weight merino. Um, heavy merino, that's what it was called. Um, I just needed a little bit of a break from that yarn. And my Oslo hat. <laughs> I really need to just finish that because I really need to cast on some more for gift knitting for the holidays. Um, so, but I'm I'm having a hard time. Actually, hold on. I did bring it over here to show you, and then I was like, oh, I'm not going to show you. I haven't made any progress, but uh, I'll just show you. The yarn that I'm using for this is um, Merino uh, Tosh. What is it called? Tosh? Merino Light? What's the brand called? Madeline Tosh. Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. And it's this single ply yarn. And there's something about this yarn, it feels great when you're just like touching it. It's like, oh, it's really soft. But knitting with it, I really am having a hard time at knitting with this yarn. Um, I think I just need to like set a goal for myself to knit like 30 minutes on this every day, do a couple of rounds, and then it'll be done and I can move on <laughs> to the next hat that I want to make. But yeah, it's like really, I'm struggling with knitting this because of the yarn. Okay, next up, I want to show you a boatload of yarn <laughs> that I have received in the last month since the last time I podcast. So let me gather it all and show you. Let's start with something fun. 
This is fun, isn't it? Okay, this is Ruby and Rose's yarn in the colorway Material Girl. This is on her Soft Rose base, which is an 8515 Superwash Merino nylon. It is four ply, fingering weight yarn. Um, some exciting news is I am going to be an affiliate for Ruby and Rose's yarn. So I'm going to post my link down in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing this colorway or she honestly has so many really interesting and lovely colorways. She does speckles really well and in a way that I really haven't seen anyone else do them before. Um, so I would really recommend checking out uh, her yarn on Instagram and on her website if you have not already. I saw these two, I purchased these two skeins. I do have three skeins coming to me for free for becoming an affiliate, so I will show you those when I receive them. But I purchased these two skeins uh, to make an Oslo hat for a friend. This is uh, hopefully going to be a gift. Um, I have a friend who would love a neon pink hat so i'm really hoping that i can get that also hat the blue one done so that i can cast this one on but it's so bright like the camera <laughs> it really is as bright as it seems on camera and it's really fun so i'm really excited about these two skeins okay next up I'm gonna show you something that actually isn't really available anymore right now. Hopefully in the future it will be coming back, but there's a fun stitch marker on here too. Okay. This is from Anna's Yarn Box and the colorway is called Among the Wildflowers. This is on a classic sock 7525 Superwash Merino nylon base. Now, Anna lives in San Diego. I have not met Anna yet, but I know she frequents uh, Apricot Yarn and Supply, which is my favorite yarn store down in San Diego. So like, I feel like we go to the same places um, and she's friends with the people that I know from the yarn shop. So I feel like by extension, I do know Anna, even though we've never met before. <laughs> um, but Anna had a really small uh, collection of hand-dyed yarn that went live uh, about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer, a few, about a month ago and I absolutely loved this colorway and really wanted to support a local San Diego friend and dyer. Now she did recently move, I messaged her because I was like, is this gonna be available again? And she said, I recently moved and I don't really have the space to dye yarn right now. So hopefully sometime in the future this will be available again, but not right now. So I feel really lucky that I have like some of the only skeins in existence of this gorgeous yarn. And my thought for it is to get um, at some point a matching like mohair or surrey and hold these three skeins with that to make a lento. I feel like it would be really pretty. And I'm just, I love this little stitch marker progress keeper that she sent with it. It's super cute and I was really excited about it. So. Um, you can go follow Anna on Instagram just to see her makes as well. She recently knit her very first sweater ever and I was like, that's your first sweater you've ever knit? Like, it's amazing. Good job. So, yeah. Anna's yarn box. Let me show you this next. Blue-green. More blue-green. Okay. I bought this before I got the yarn for my cow cardigan. And when this arrived, I put it down next to the cardigan and I was like, oh, these are basically the same color. <laughs> no wonder I really loved this. Um, but this is Paisley Knits Yarn Co. And the colorway is called Poseidon. I got this on her Krabby DK base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. And you can just see the dark, lovely, greens and blues. There are some lighter uh, areas in this as well. My original plan was to knit a clove sweater in this, um, 
but I'm not sure if that's what I'm gonna end up doing anymore. I haven't decided. I may save some of this for like a knit for like some male in my life. Um, you know, I have a baby nephew now, so I might make him like a little baby sweater, although I could probably knit that in like one skein of yarn, and then I'd have four leftovers still. But, or these might become hats as well, because I have a lot of men in my life that uh, would like hats. So, we'll see. I haven't fully decided yet, but it's gorgeous, and I'm really happy with it. So that was the first part of my Paisley Knits order. The second part of my Paisley Knits order is so fluffy. She, Coley, who uh, runs and owns Paisley Knits, was like heavily, heavily marketing this cloud base. So this is also Paisley Knits. This is the colorway Zeus. Both of these were from her Greek Gods collection. And this is on her cloud base, which is a 70% baby alpaca, 7% merino wool, 23% nylon. And this is, let me show you, this is like a thick, like almost bulky weight, um, fuzzy base. And it's so soft. And let's see, it's 284 yards per 100 grams, so it's kind of like 284. I mean, that's more yardage than a skein of DK. So I have three skeins of this, and my plan for these three skeins is to make the big rib by Jesse Made Designs. So I'm excited. I love I love the blues and purples in this. They are a bit more muted because it's on this like fuzzy base, but I think this is going to end up being like really pretty and just like really comfortable as well. So, I'm excited about this one. I know I said that for all of them, but I'm just I get so excited about yarn, you guys. Okay, I got two more things here. This one. This one just has my heart. Look at this. This is Bella Filato Studio. And the colorway is called Cozy Flannel. This is on her Bella Worsted Base, 100% Superwash Merino. And it's this gorgeous, like, flannel pink. Pink flannel colorway. That's the best way to describe it. It's got these magentas and oranges. Ooh, buddy hit the camera and like black speckles and I have actually used this colorway before back in last year at the beginning of 2022 I knit a pair of socks in this exact colorway in this exact base it was the worsted weight I knit the comfort socks by Ozetta and I posted on the time on my Instagram story and I said I wish I had bought a sweater quantity of this yarn because I would love to make a cozy flannel cardigan out of it. And it's just like a full circle moment because Bella Filato Studio, Gwen, was posting a bit of a de-stash as well. And this sweater quantity was on there and I said, I need that. That is, <laughs> that is the colorway that I've been looking for uh, since the beginning of 2022. So... Uh, I haven't decided which cardigan I'm going to make with this yet. I have five skeins of worsted weight, which I think should be enough. Um, I'm looking at my Cal cardigan right now because I think I'm using five skeins of worsted on that. I need to double check the numbers, but I think I'll be able to get through it with only five. So... Uh, worst comes to worst, I could make another Cal cardigan. I'm also considering the Field Day cardigan by Ozetta. I think that would be really nice as well. But I feel like this would just make a really cute, you know, almost like shacket flannel cardigan with this colorway. So I'm really excited about it, as I am with everything that I've said. Okay, the last yarn. This is from Witchfire Fibers. I was obsessed with this color called Bolettes and Blooms. This was from her like snail collection, I think. I don't know, it had something to do with snails. 
and I just really loved this colorway. I couldn't bring myself at the time to buy a sweater quantity, so I just bought a sock set. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe at some point I'll learn to make socks, which is something I say very often. Um, and it comes with this little dark brown, dark purple mini, and um, again, I just think it's a really pretty color. So this is what I have, and lastly, I bought a second sock set. This one from Witch Fire Fibers. It's called Lilac Dreams. And I'm actually going to be doing a giveaway for this sock set. So, since it has been a long time since my last podcast episode, and just to thank all 2,000 something of you for being here and watching my videos, I wanted to do a giveaway for this episode to welcome everyone back to the Knit California channel and just to give back to the community. So, I didn't think this through. What do I want to do for the giveaway? <laughs> oh, I have an idea. Okay, so to enter the giveaway, um, leave a comment down below and tell me what your favorite cardigan pattern is. It can be something that you have knit before, it can be one that you have not knit, uh, but maybe want to knit. It can be one that you just love admiring that someone else has knit. It doesn't need to be knit. It could also be crochet as well if you do not knit, but um, leave a comment with your favorite cardigan pattern and I will randomly choose someone for this beautiful skein sock set. Sock set skein. Here's the information if you would like to see that. Yay! So I think that is everything. Oh. Last update. Oh. The pups got haircuts and new harnesses. So they look naked, but still cute. And they also look like they're going back to school. I keep calling these their like back to school harnesses. Their plaid uniforms. What Rocky? What do you think? Still a sweet boy. Okay. Oh, oh okay. He's gone. Um, yeah, I think that is everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have not already, please hit that subscribe button. I'm getting close to 3,000 subscribers, which is really exciting. My goal for the end of this year is 5,000. So let's keep going. And I will be back at you next week with a new episode. And until then, I hope you get a lot of time to knit and I will see you soon. Bye!